الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد وأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سيجأل لهم الرحمن ودا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Allah Ta'ala has given us two blessings. In fact, Allah Ta'ala has given us many blessings, but I want to highlight two. One is the intellect, our minds, our brains, through which we think. It's a huge blessing because there are people whose brains don't work properly. And we might have seen people around us that, despite of the fact that these people are Adults, they are grown-ups, but they cannot think. They have the brain of, say, a five-year-old. It's a huge test from Allah Ta'ala. It's a huge test for that person, and of course, it's a huge test for the parents. But this is a blessing. The intellect is a blessing. Allah Ta'ala has given us this intellect so that we can reflect on the signs of Allah Ta'ala, so that we can reflect on to on the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can think about the purpose of our life so that we can think about as to why are we in this life why did Allah ta'ala give us this life this is why Allah ta'ala has given us this intellect but then there is another blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given all of us and that is the blessing of the heart the spiritual heart. And the heart is the place of emotions. The heart is a place of emotions. Emotions like feeling sad, feeling good, and some good emotions like love, and some bad emotions like hatred, ill feelings, jealousy, animosity, arrogance. So these are all emotions. People feel these emotions. People feel hatred and ill feelings about other people. And people feel love for other people. They're all emotions. And this is a blessing as well, because this is not given to animals. Many of the animals, they don't have emotions. Some of them do, but the others don't. But human beings have been given this blessing of the heart where they have all of these emotions. And the best emotion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in our heart is love. We love each other. The parents, they love their children. The children, they love their parents. The husband, he loves his wife. The wife, she loves her husband. The relatives love each other. The student loves their teacher, their sheikh. The sheikh loves their their, te- their students, their muridin. This element, this emotion of love is a huge blessing of Allah. It's a huge blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants that all of this love should be directed towards Him. The, lo- the All the emotions of love in our heart should be directed towards Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah that I recited in the beginning that وَالَّذِينَ amanu أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ That the people of Iman are those people who are extreme in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are, their, their, their hearts are filled with love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the definition of Iman. Yani, your Iman is not complete if you don't have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, people may question that, what does it mean then, if I love my husband, if I love my children, is it not the love of Allah? And Allah Ta'ala wants that. I should have only extreme love of Allah. So what about these? 
Well, all of these loves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made permissible or rather recommended, it is the offshoot of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah ta'ala has ordered us in the Qur'an to be good to our parents. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said to love, has ordered us to love our parents. So love of parents would be the offshoot of the love of Allah. Similarly, Allah Ta'ala wants us to be good, to, us to be good with our wives. Allah Ta'ala has ordered the wives to be good to their husbands. So loving a sp- our spouse is in reality the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala has ordered us to love our children. So loving children is the offshoot of the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So all of these loves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made permissible, they are all the offshoot of the love of Allah. But the loves that we, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made impermissible, for example, you know, subhanAllah, one of the fitness of this time and age is that, you know, boys and girls, they have their so-called love for each other. And they have these friendships, you know, through any means, Basically, normally these days, this internet is the biggest fitna through Facebooks and through social networking sites and all of that. So these, this sort of love is absolutely impermissible, right? And this is considered as something that is not love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to understand what does it mean to have love of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that we all love Him. And not only love him, but we should be extreme in our love for him. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ And I just want to talk about one love today. That is the offshoot of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that love is the love of a mother for her children. It's the love of a mother for her children. It is very amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has put the love of the children in the hearts of the mother. It is the love, this love has been put in the heart of the mothers by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to understand that. You know, when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was thrown into the river by her mother on the orders of Allah because Fir'aun was killing all of the babies, all of the baby boys. And in a long story, but the army of the Fir'aun, they took Sayyidina Musa a.s. out of the river and he was brought in the presence of Fir'aun and his wife and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَأَلْقَيْتُ مُحَبَّةً minni." I put love in the heart of the wife of Fir'aun. Yani I was the one who put the, the, the love of, the, of Musa a.s. In, in the heart of the wife of Fir'aun. So Allah ta'ala is the one who puts the love in the hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has naturally put the love of the children in the hearts of the mother. It's very natural. And, you know, sometimes, once in a while, we do hear this news that a, a mother, she, say, killed her children. So that is the proof that if Allah ta'ala takes this love out of the hearts of the mothers, then she can do anything. But naturally, it does not happen like that. Naturally, Majority of the time, sunnah is that Allah Ta'ala does put the love of the children in the hearts of the mother. And it's not only human beings. It is not only human beings. Even animals, they love their children. The sparrows, they love their children. The birds, they love their children. Once, there was a sahabi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was going, going somewhere and he saw that there was a nest on a tree. And... He just looked at the nest and there were small little babies that had just come out of the eggs. And he really loved the babies, small little cute birds. So he he picked them up from the nest and he carried them with him. And he had just taken a few steps and suddenly what he sees that there's a bird, basically it was the mother of those babies, she came and started flying around the head of the Sahabi. And Sahabi didn't realize that what is the bird, the mother bird asking. So he continued walking. And after some time, this bird, the mother bird, she came and sat on the shoulder of the Sahabi. In other words, if you're not letting my babies come back to me, then take me along as well. 
I cannot live without my babies. If you are if you are taking my babies along, then take me along as well. And this Sahabi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he came, went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told him the whole story, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the Sahabi to go and put the, the baby birds back into the nest. He said that, you know, the mother bird, she, she has come because of her love for her babies. You go and put the babies back in the nest. So this is very natural. Very, very natural. You know, you might have seen a hen. And if she has those chickens, the, those chicks, small little babies that she has, if a cat comes and tries to attack the, the chicks, the small babies of that hen, you know, hen will just stand in front, will even spread her wings. What is she trying to say? She is trying to say that you fight with me first and then you can attack my babies. She knows that she will never be able to fight with the cat. Cat is like it's 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 a predator sort of right. It has paws, it has nails, it can it has sharp teeth. The hen cannot fight with a cat, but still the hen will spread her wings in front of the cat, you know, and saying that fight with me first, and if you're able to kill me, then you can go and attack my baby. It is so natural, and it is at its peak in human beings. Subhanallah, there was a. Uh, a very amazing story that in Russia, a long time ago, there was an earthquake. And the people, you know, the earthquake was very strong and the houses actually, they got destroyed. And uh, the rest, the people who were rescuing, they were taking off the rebels of the houses. And in one of the house, when they were, when they took off the rebel, after around seven days of the earthquake, they found out that there is a woman who was unconscious and she had a baby in her lap and who was also unconscious. So they were still alive though. They, they could feel the breathing. They could feel the heartbeat. So they took them in, a, in emergency to the hospital. And they realized that the, all the fingers of this this woman were wounded. The t- fingertips, all of them were wounded. And after, you know, they, they gave them emergency treatment and both the baby and the mother came into, came back to consciousness. So they interviewed her. That how, you know, what happened and, you know, how come did you, uh, did, uh, were you saved? And she said that, oh no, I was in the corner of my house and suddenly the house fell, so I was at a place where the rubble actually did not fall, did not fall on me and my baby, and it fell at a in a, in a position that you know it didn't harm us. So we were sort of saved in a corner. And they asked her, "How come then your fingertips are wounded? All of your fingertips are wounded?" So she said that I had this baby in my lap, and after some time, the baby started crying because. It, she was hung, the baby was hungry. So I could not go anywhere because we were trapped. And, uh, and in any way, the baby was just taking the milk. So she said that I feeding the baby with the milk. And I fed her, you know, the baby as far as I could. So every few hours, the baby would be in need of the milk and I would feed. But then a time came because I, we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't eat anything. I couldn't drink. So I, you know, the, the milk was finished at a certain point. And then after that, when the baby was still crying, then I could not think of an idea that how, what should I be feeding to the baby. But I thought that let me, you know, me, let me make my baby take my blood and he drink my blood. So with my teeth, I, I punctured one of my, my finger and the blood came out from that and I put my thumb in the mouth of the baby and it started taking blood, starting drinking blood. And then after that, you know, then I, would, I, I wounded my second fingertip and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and all fingertips. And he said, she said that a, a time came that I, because I had not eaten for that much amount of time and I was, I was losing blood as well. And you know, I don't know what happened that I, I went unconscious and I don't even know what happened to my baby. But this is why my, all my fingertips are wounded. Allahu Akbar. This is what a mother can do. This is what a mother can do. It's so interesting that 
Everybody who gets married, she wants to be a mother. She wants to be a mother. Majority of the people, they want to be a mother. And if Allah Ta'ala is not giving them children, they will come, they will go to the mashayikh, they will ask them for du'as, that we'll make du'a, that may Allah Ta'ala give me a child. Despite of the fact that she has all the blessings, she has a beautiful house, she has, you know, she has a car that she drives, her husband is taking care of her, she has a loving husband. Everything is in there, but if she does not have a child, she's worried. Right? And she also knows what does it mean to become a mother. She knows that she will become sick. She knows that she will possibly have this morning sickness. She will have nausea. She knows that she will be going through pain. She knows that she will be not be able to operate properly for next nine months. She knows that you know it's tough. She knows what does it mean to deliver a baby. She knows that it's not only delivery. It's about, it's after that. She will not have her personal life anymore. She will be just taking care of the baby after that. Whenever the baby will sleep, she will sleep. And if, she, you know, whenever the baby will be awake, she will be awake. If the baby needs her, she will be after the baby. She knows all of that. But still she wants a baby. What is that? It's in reality the, the love of the baby. She, Allah Ta'ala has put that thing in her heart. She will sacrifice all of her needs. She will prefer the child over herself. You know, every, she will not eat, and but she will make sure that her children are eating. Right? We all your mothers, you know that. That how much love Allah Ta'ala has put in our hearts for our children. So love is over everything. This love is over everything. Even if the child misbehaves, subhanAllah, sometimes we ignore that as mothers as well. We even... Ignore that if the child misbehaves. We are ready to forgive. There is a story that is written in the books about Sayyidina Hassan Basri rahimahullah. That he said that once I was going through, I was passing through a street and suddenly what I saw that a door of uh, a house opened and there was a woman who was scolding her, her boy, her, her, her child. And the child was around possibly 10, 12. And she was scolding him and she was saying, you know, you never listen to me. You are always, and you do always do the things against my hookah, my commands. And, you know, just get out of my house. I don't want to see your face anymore. And these sort of things. And Sayyidina Hazrat Basri, he, he, he writes that I stopped for a moment. I started looking as to what will happen. And the mother said, now never come back to my house, just get out and you know, I don't want to see your face anymore. Go and do whatever you want to do, but don't come back. So, and then she pushed the, the child out of the house and then locked the door. So, so, this boy, he sat at the doorsteps for some time and he was crying and after some time he got up and started walking and he went to the end of the street and when he reached the end of the street, he returned and he came back and sat on the doorsteps of the house again. So he said, Hassan Masih said that I was looking. And after some time, this mother of, of this child, she opened the door again. And when he looked, and when she looked at the baby, at the, at the child, at the boy that he is still sitting on the doorsteps, she started scolding again. Why didn't you go? Didn't I ask you to go? Never come back. And the, and the boy said, Oh my mother, I thought about it, that I'll leave the house. That I always bother you, you're never happy with me. I will leave the house and in reality, I started walking. And I thought that I'll go and work at some place and I'll earn something on my own and I'll live by myself. So I thought about it and I started walking, but then a thought came into my mind that I will possibly get every single thing, but where will I get a mother from? Where will I get a mother? And this thought forced me to come back. Oh, my mother, you do whatever with me. You want whatever you want to say, you say. But, oh, mother, I cannot leave this doorstep. I cannot leave this house. Where can I find a mother? So, Hassan Basri Rahmatullah, he writes that when his mother, she heard that, subhanAllah, all of her anger went away. His, her heart melted. And she, she hugged the, the boy and started crying and said, my son, come on in. So this is the heart of the mother. She is ready to forgive all the time, even if the child misbehaves. 
even if the child misbehaves. I'll tell you another incident. This is what my Shaykh Admar Azur Fukada Adurkatum, he has told that in Pakistan, it's a true story. In Pakistan, there was a village where there were, there were a husband and a wife. Allah Ta'ala gave them a son. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave them a son. So, they, the son, son was very brilliant, very sharp. So the other people in the village, when they realized that this son, this boy is sharp, is intelligent, they encouraged the parents that you should get, send him to school. Normally, you know, in villages, the, the children, they don't go to school much. Even if they go, they will just go to very, they will just, uh, they won't study much. So they encouraged the parents that they should send this child to school. So this child was very brilliant. He was uh, he, he passed all of the grades with, with good marks. He would always top the class. So when he was done with his grade 10, so the, the people said that to the parents that why don't you send the child to the city so that he can go into the college, into the university. So the parents, they said, yeah, all right, that's fine. This was their only child, only one son and no other child. So they said, all right. You know, we'll send the, our son to the city and he can go to the university. So this child, he went to the university and he studied engineering and became an engineer at the end. And he would always come back, you know, every other weekend, would ask how their parents are doing. And there was a lot of love between the parents and this son of theirs. So after he became an engineer, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, a, uh, gave him a job in the city as well. So he asked his parents, you know, this is a job that is... On, uh, that I'm offered, so should I accept this? So the parents said, yes, you should take it, that's fine. So again, he got the job in the city, and he would always, every other weekend, he would come back and will uh, will meet with his parents. And of course, he was earning, so he would give money to his parents as well. Just taking care of his parents, parents were happy, you know, our son is doing well, and, you know, he comes and he, he, he meets with us, he's also supporting us and all of that. They were very happy. After some time, they thought of getting him married. So they got him married in the city. Because of course he was an engineer, I mean, they, they could not have, they, he, of course the wife that he was looking for was also a little bit, who has, uh, who has uh, some secular education as well. So they married him in the city. Subhanallah, so this wife of his, initially she would come back, come back to visit the parents in the village. But after some time she started saying, you know, oh, why do we go to the village? You know, every other weekend, you know, we have a house of our own. We have things to take care of. So, you know, we cannot go every other weekend. We have to, you know, I, I want to stay back. So, subhanAllah, you know, the he listened to what his wife was saying. So, he said to his parents, you know, that it is not easy for us to come back every other weekend. So, we'll come. But, you know, after maybe once a month. So, Allah Ta'ala gave him children as well. And now after the children, it was even more, you know, how can we take all the children once a month? So he started reducing his trips to his parents even further. So here there was a job offer in Saudi Arabia that came in the papers. And he asked his parents, you know, there is a job offer. Should I apply for that? So his parents said, yeah, yeah it's a very blessed thing that if you get a job in Saudi Arabia, close to Haramain, you should go. And uh, I mean, if you get this job, you must go. It's just a blessing. It's a, an opportunity. So this was the heart of the parents. They were let, they were willing to let him go just because of this very fact that, you know, he can get a job in Saudi Arabia. So he applied and he got the job and he was offered that. So he came to his parents and he said, you know, I've been offered the job and I'm going on a certain day. And the parents were very happy. They said, go my son, our son, but make sure that you do come back and make sure that you you know, take, you know, you, 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 you find out as to how are we doing, make sure you come every, every once in a while, very often, to, uh, to meet with us. So son said, of course, my parents, how can I not come back? And he went. So they started coming like once a year to see their parents. Again, the wife said, you know, we have three children. It's very expensive to go back, uh, to Pakistan. So I mean, we cannot afford that. So you know, we should reduce our trips. And subhanAllah, the trips got reduced from once a year to once every two years, once every three years. And subhanAllah, time came that he didn't go for some time, for quite a while. 
And one thing that he would do after that, that he would go on Hajj every year. Every year he would go for Hajj. But subhanAllah, one day, once in, in a Hajj, during a Hajj, he, somebody saw that he is crying. After the Hajj was over, he was crying. And there was a person of Allah, and he, he saw him crying, and he went to him, and he asked him, why are you crying? You know, you, you're just done with Hajj, and you're crying so uh, so much. So he said that I've been doing Hajj for the last 13 years. For last 13 years, I've been doing Hajj every year, and every time after the Hajj, somebody comes in my dream, and he says that your Hajj is not accepted. Your Hajj is not accepted. And I'm crying because last night I also saw the same dream. Somebody came in my dream that your Hajj is not accepted. So this person, he started inquiring about him, and then he found out that he has not visited his parents for a long time. So he advised him that, you know what, I encourage, I advise you to go back to Pakistan and you go and meet with your parents. So he agreed, he packed his bags right away and went to Pakistan, went to his village. And subhanAllah, he's not been there for a long time, for maybe around 10, 12 years. So everything was changed and he was thinking, I've not seen my parents for the last 20, 10, 12 years. How will, they will not be even willing to see my face, to look at my face. So he saw a boy, so everything was changed, you know, the, the, the streets were different, and the, some development has been done. So he was a boy coming, like a, you know, 13, 14 year old boy. He called him, he said, do you know where, uh, you know, that such and such uh, person, uh, people, um, an old man and a woman, do you know where do they live? Because he could not recognize where his house was because of everything got changed. So he said, oh, those those people whose son have gone to Saudi Arabia, I've heard, and he's never come back for a long time. He said, yeah, yeah, that, those people. He said, oh, the, the, the man has passed away six months ago. So he was shocked that his father has passed away six months. And then, and the old woman, she is in that house, that particular house. So he went to the house, and with that heavy heart that, oh, my father had passed away, I did not even know. So, and the door was, he felt that the door was a little open. So he was thinking, how can I face my mother if I go inside? She will scold me. You didn't even take care of us. You didn't even, you know, take care of us when your father passed away and I'm alone and she will scold and she will scream and all of that. So, but he, of course, held his courage. He pushed the, the, the gate and went inside. And he saw that in the courtyard there is a bed lying and there is a bed on which his mother was lying. And she was very weak, very old. So he quietly, he went to his mother and he realized that his mother is saying something very quietly. So he went without her mother, his mother realizing, he went and he sat by her head side. And he tried to listen as to what is she saying. And she was saying, he was making dua. She was making dua that, Ya Allah, you know, we only, I only had one son and he has... God, he is gone and I have not seen him for so many years. And Ya Allah, my husband has passed away and he was not there. But Ya Allah, I am in this state now that I am about to pass away any time. Ya Allah, please send my son back so that he can bury me with his own hands. So this is the dua that she was making. And when he heard that dua, he started crying and he said to his mother, Mother, I am here. And and despite of the fact that he was out for so long, she didn't scold him. She hugged him, oh my son, welcome, where have you been, how are you? SubhanAllah. And Ajeeb that, you know, she passed away in next few days while he was there. So he buried his mother and then after that he went back to Saudi Arabia. And SubhanAllah, next year he again went for Hajj as was his routine. And when he did that hajj, he saw a dream that not only that of your, this hajj of yours has been accepted, but all of your previous hajj have been accepted as well. So this is the power of this love between parents and the child. But the point that I was saying is that the mothers will always be willing to accept their children. This is that natural love that Allah Ta'ala has put in their hearts for their child. 
So, what is this all about? This love has been given because the mothers, they make so much sacrifice for their children. They give birth to their children. They carry the child in their womb for nine months. They deliver the baby. They take care of the baby. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has put that love in the hearts of the mother because if there was no love, they would not be able, they would not have been able to go through all of this process. And then when the baby is born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then has ordered the children to love their mothers. In fact, there's a hadith that al-jannatu tahta aqdam al-ummahat that paradise and in the feet of your mothers in the, is in the feet of the mothers. And you also love your mothers back. You also love your mothers back. But subhanAllah, that's very, very true. But we, Allah Ta'ala has put paradise in our feet. But the question that we all need to ask ourselves, are we worthy of the, of being those mothers in whose feet is the paradise? Are we worthy of those, of being those mothers in whose feet Allah Ta'ala has put my paradise? Who are these mothers who are actually worthy of having paradise in their feet? You know, these are those mothers who will after that they have given birth to their children, they not only take care of the worldly things about of their children as to if they have eaten or not, if they have slept well or not, if they are they're they're wearing properly or not, they're also thinking about the paradise of their children as well. These are the mothers who are true, truly worthy of having paradise in their feet. Who are taking care of their children's paradise also. This is what Allah Ta'ala wants. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in reality put this love in our hearts for our children. So that we can train our children for paradise. So that we can train our children to be obedient slaves of Allah Ta'ala and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the best mother. This is the mother that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that who is worthy of having paradise in her feet. You know, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned a mother in the Quran. And she was the wife of Sayyidina Imran alayhi salam. She was expecting a baby. And she, the, she had not delivered the baby. And she was making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Rabbi inni nadartu laka ma fi batani muharrara. That Ya Allah, I, I make a vow that I want to dedicate that child that is in my womb in your service. Yani the baby is not born yet. But she is making dua that Ya Allah, this child that is in my womb, I dedicate that child for your service. Please fataqabbal minni, please accept this child from me. Allahu Akbar. This is that best brother who is giving birth to a child, not that this child is going to grow up and will become the support in my old age. This is not the concern of these mothers. They want that their children become people of paradise and they are there ready to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are there to dedicate their lives for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the, who, this, these are the best mothers. These are the mothers who are truly worthy of having paradise in their feet. And this is what we all should do. We should not only work on our own selves, we should become the people of paradise, but also work on our children so that they become the people of paradise. You know, subhanAllah, when people, these mothers become those mothers who become people of Allah themselves, who are always connected to Allah Ta'ala, who are always training their children to be in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. These are the people who are have, with that deep connection with Allah that any time that they will raise their hands, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will accept their du'as. Any time that they will raise hands for their children, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will accept their du'as. You know, my Shaykh Azmar Adil Qardamid Barakatuhum, he was mentioning a story about his own mother. He said that, you know, subhanAllah, every single night, my mother would get up for tahajjud. And he said that I was a very small little boy, you know, very young, maybe three, four, five year old. And he said that I used to sleep next to my mother. And he said that whenever I, I would wake up in the middle of the night before fajr, and I will, I will always find my mother 
making dua after the hajjah. And he said that my mother will take, take names of all of my brothers and sisters. And you know, I would listen to all of their names and when she would take my name at the end, he said, I would, be, I would feel so happy about it and then I would go back to sleep. SubhanAllah, these are the mothers of Allah. And he said, Hazrat said that once, you know, we were in, uh, in the village and it was raining a lot. So we were in our house and, you know, the, the, it rained so much that water started coming into the houses and it was flooding. And he said that my mother, she, it was me, like me and my brothers and sisters and my mother in the house. So she started picking up the stuff and started putting it on a, like making a pile a uh, pile of it, and you make putting st- stuff one on top of, uh, on top of each other, and so that you know water doesn't uh, harm all of the stuff in the house. And she said that uh, he said that after that she put me and my br- my brothers and sisters on top of that pile of goods. So we were sitting there, and it was raining. It was raining. It was raining, and the and the water was coming in. It was pouring. And Hazrat said that when it rained a lot and water, water continued coming, suddenly she made a dua. She said, Ya Allah. She said in Punjabi, in her local language, she said, Ya Allah, it's enough. Ya Allah, it's enough. It has rained a lot. And Hazrat said that as soon as she said that, Ya Allah, it's enough, the rain stopped as it has never rained. It had never rained. Allah Akbar. This is how these people get connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their du'as are accepted. And these are the people whose children also become those children that are accepted by Allah. These children also become those children that are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the reason that Allah ta'ala has put this love in our hearts for our children so that we can make them people of Allah. We can make them the people of paradise. You know, one of my teachers says, Mulana, Khalil Rahman Sajjad Nurmani Dawud Barkatuhum, one of very famous scholars of India. His father was in Mulana, uh, Manzoor Nurmani Sahib, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he was the author of Ma'arif al Hadith. So he, his Mulana Sajjad Nurmani Sahib, he told me the story that, uh, that his mother, he had, he has still a mushaf of Quran that his mother used to recite. And he said that she was not an alima. She was not who could understand Arabic language. But subhanAllah, when she would recite Quran, she would cry at every single page that she would, she would recite. And he said that this mushab that I have of hers, every single page, the lower half of that is, it is soggy with the tears of hers. Allahu Akbar. And he said that once my parents went for hajj and, uh, and he said that we were not that well off, so the parents could not afford to take the children along with them to Hajj. And he said that when they came back from Hajj, I was expecting, I said I was, he said that I was a very small boy, and I was expecting that my parents might have brought some gift for me from Hajj. So he said that I went to my mother, and I asked her, you know, oh mom, what did you bring for me from Hajj? And he said that they were not that well off, so in reality they had not brought anything. They could not buy any gift for them, for the children. So when he, he said, when I asked my mom that what did you bring for me from Hajj? So she, he said that she, she made me sit and she hugged me. And then she said that, oh my son, I could not bring any gift from, for you from Hajj. But when I went there, I held the ghilaf of the Kaaba. I held the curtain of the Kaaba. And I made dua that, Ya Allah, please accept this of my child for the service of your deen. I made a dua that, Ya Allah, please accept this child of mine for the service of your deen. Allah Akbar. These are the best mothers. These are the mothers who have that concern about their children. Who are themselves connected with Allah. And also have this concern about their children that how can they be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyidina Anas bin Malik, you know, his mother, when he was 10 years of age, she took him to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said to the Prophet, that Ya, oh, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, please accept this of my child for your service. Just imagine 10 years of age. You, you might, you, if any of you have 10 year old boy, he's a small little boy. 
And the mother is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, please take him into your service. Accept him. So a mother concerned. And Prophet ﷺ became so happy that a mother who is love, who loves him as, as well, and she's also presenting her child for his service. Out of that happiness, he made dua for Sayyidina Anas. And he said, Ya Allah, bless him in his life, in his wealth, in his children. And Ya Allah, forgive him. Have forg- you know, forgive him of his sins. So Sayyidina Anas said that I actually felt the, the acceptance of those duas in my life. He said, Allah Ta'ala blessed me so much in my life that, you know, I, you know, I was one, I used to, I would wait that when will death come? He lived for more than 100 years. And he said, Allah Ta'ala blessed me and my children so much that I saw more than 100 children and grandchildren with my own eyes. And Allah Ta'ala blessed me and my wealth so much that I used to break the bricks of gold with my own hand later in my life. And he says, he used to say that I've seen the result of the three duas of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I have a hope in Allah that he will accept the fourth dua as well that may Allah forgive him of his sins. But this, what is, where is this all coming from? Because of that dedication of his mother who took him to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, this is what we all want to become. This should be our concern. This should be our concern. The good mothers are always concerned about their children. They're concerned about themselves and they're concerned about their children. I'll tell you another story. So in the, in the time of Sayyidina Hassan Basri, rahmatullahi alayhi, he had a neighbor, a, a mother and her young child, her young boy. The father of that child had passed away, the husband of that woman, and there were only two people living. And subhanAllah, this child, he got into the company of bad boys and started sinning. He went on the wrong wrong path, wrong track. And the mother was a very pious woman. She would always advise him, my son, leave this, this is bad, this is sin, Allah Ta'ala doesn't get happy with all of that. But he would never listen to his mother. So finally, this mother went to Sayyidina Hassan Basri, Rahmatullah Alayhi, and said that, please make dua for my son, he is not on track. So Sayyidina Hassan Basri said, you know, bring this child to me whenever you get a chance. So she went and said to the son that, you know, Sayyidina Hassan Basri is calling you, why don't we go, both go together and meet with him? So the son said, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to him. So Sayyidina Hassan Basri, Rahmatullah Alayhi, when she was informed by the mother that he doesn't want to come, he said, you know, what can we do? We can only, only make dua, but looks like he is a gone case. So, subhanAllah, what happened that this boy, he got some disease. And that disease increased so much that, you know, he, he went on his deathbed. Now on his deathbed, he started realizing that, oh, what did I do? You know, I did not listen to my my mother, I did not listen to Allah Ta'ala, and this is the state that I'm in, and I'll die very soon. So the mother at that stage, even despite of the fact that he never listened to him, she, her heart was still soft because of that love that she had for her child. So she said that, don't worry, inshallah, ask for forgiveness, do tawbah, and, and, and the, the son at that point, he said that, can you please call Sayyidina Hassan Basri now? So the mother went to Sayyidina Hassan Basri, very happy that, oh, my son is willing to meet with Hassan Basri. And she said to Hassan Basri, Rahmatullah Ali, uh, that, you know, my son wants to meet with you. So the Hassan Basri said, you know, I don't feel like that he will be listening to me. Why would he listen to me? That he has, I've been calling him for so long, he never wanted to come. You know, go and I, I don't think that he's serious. And the mother got very depressed, very sad. She went back and told the boy that looks, that he has refused to come. And the boy started crying. He said, oh, I'm such a bad person that even such a wali of Allah doesn't want to see my face. I didn't listen to what you, didn't listen to you, my mother as well. Oh, my mother, when I die, do me a favor that, you know, put a rope in my neck and drag me into the streets of Basra so that people will see that if a person, if a child doesn't listen to his mother, if a child doesn't listen to Allah Ta'ala, this is what happens to that person. So drag me into the streets of Batra. And he passed away in that state. 
The mother was then crying, crying, crying because, and she was thinking who will come to pray the janaza of my son, he was been such a bad boy. And she was in that state, somebody knocked the door. And she opened the door and it was in Hassan Basri Rahmatullah. And she said, you know, Hazrat, why are you here? And he said that after that you, after you went, I lied down for Qailula and I saw a dream that somebody was saying in my dream that, oh, Hassan Basri, what sort of friend are you of mine that another friend of mine has passed away and you don't want to go and read Janaza of him? Then what sort of friend are you that another friend of mine, another wali of mine has passed away and you don't want to go and read his janaza? I have come to read the janaza of a wali of Allah. He did tawbah, he became wali of Allah, this boy. But because of who? Because of his mother. Because of his mother, she was always advising him, encouraging him, calling him back. This was her love for the child who had kept him on track. Who had brought him back on track, her du'as for him, her concern for him, going to Sayyidina Hassan Basri, calling him, asking him for du'as. This is what a mother can do. This is the power of a mother, her concern, her love. So this is what we need to become. That mother who has that love, natural love by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our children. But we should be those people who are connected to Allah ta'ala ourselves and we should be the ones who should to have this, this passion in our hearts to make our children connected to Allah Ta'ala as well. Being mother is a blessing. Being mother is a blessing. Honestly, it's such a huge thing that Allah Ta'ala has given us. And subhanAllah, we should not forget about our mothers. Our mother is a blessing as well. We should not forget that somebody has given birth to us as well. We also have a mother. When we have this love for our children, we should also have a love for our mothers. They are a blessing. Sayyidina so Al-Qamah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was passing away. He was about to, he was on his deathbed, but his ruh wasn't going out. He was in a lot of pain. Some sahaba called the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and informed him of his state. And he came to his house and he was in such a difficult state. He inquired and found out that his mother was not happy with him for something. His mother was not happy with him for something. And he said to the mother, please forgive him for whatever he's done. Because he's in this state because of that. So mother was in, still in anger. She said, I'm, I'm not forgiving him. So Prophet Wasallam said, alright, then bring some woods and lit on fire. And the mother said, why? He said that we will just burn him. Why? He said, because if you don't forgive him, he can be burned in the fire, so why not burn him now? So mother said, no, 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 no. You know, I forgive him. Don't, you know, I, I, I've, I've forgotten about everything. I forgive him. As soon as he forgave, Sayyidina Al-Kamaz radiallahu ta'ala and his, his, his rule departed. Subhanallah. You know, this is what can happen if you don't make our mothers happy. We forget that you know, they have given us birth. They have gone through the, all of that pain that we might have gone through when we have delivered our babies, when we have taken care of our babies. So please, we all need to also remember our mothers. But be that mother, please. Be that mother that Allah Ta'ala wants from all of us, want, want all of us to become. That mother that is worthy of having paradise in her feet. The mother who is connected to Allah Ta'ala, whose heart is connected to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We have to all become those people. Even if we are not mothers out of this point, if Allah Ta'ala will make us those mothers, we should become those mothers. And for that we have to start working on our hearts now. It's not a moment of, it's not about, you know, a split of a second. Our hearts cannot change in the split of a second. It can if Allah Ta'ala wants. But the sunnah is that we have to work on our hearts. It's not easy. It takes an effort. And you know, we one of the sunnahs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He has kept in this dunya is that we must find somebody, a person of Allah that we can hook up to so that we can go and sit in His company, in His sohbat. And because of it, being in His company, because of the askar, the ma'wala that He might teach us, we do those askar every single day of our lives. You know, by doing that, then Allah Ta'ala will help us in changing of our hearts and then we will become those mothers. 
even if we are or if we are going to, uh, we are going to be, we are mothers to be. But we have to work on our hearts so that Allah Ta'ala is pleased with us. So that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is pleased with us. And when we will become those people, then Allah Ta'ala will love us. And Allah Ta'ala will then put His love in our hearts as well. And this is the goal, isn't it? That's what I said in the beginning. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ The people of Iman, people of belief, have extreme love of Allah. But for that, we have to make an effort. We have to work on our hearts. We have to become those people that have the extreme love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the hearts. That have extreme love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts. And who are, ex- who are absolutely obedient to Allah ta'ala. Who are absolutely obedient to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I tell you one more thing. When we have love of Allah, we have complete deen in our life. When we, we follow complete shariat, when we follow complete sunnah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put our love in the hearts of others as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put other people's hearts, other people's love in our hearts as well. You know, when people, there is chaos in the, in the house. When people, the people are not going, the, the people are not living together well. When children don't listen to us. When there are other relatives who don't want to, who don't love us anymore. When our husbands don't love us. When our wives don't love us. Do have we ever reflected as to why is that all happening? The reason is that Allah Ta'ala has not put our love in their hearts. Allah Ta'ala has not put our love in the hearts of our husbands. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجْعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ وُدَّا That people of Iman, when they do good deeds, in other words, when they are obedient to Allah and His Messenger, then Ar-Rahman, the merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He puts love in the hearts of the other people. So when, whenever there is, we feel that in our families, in our, in the hearts of our husbands, in the hearts of our wife, in the hearts of our children, there is no love for us, there is no obedience, there is no sukun, there is no peace in the house. In reality, we are sinning. In reality, we are not being obedient to Allah Ta'ala and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why Allah Ta'ala has not put our love in their hearts. This is the reality. This is the reason. So please, we need to become those people so that, you know, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will love us, so that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala put our love in the hearts of other people. And inshallah Ta'ala, for that, we have all have to make an effort. We all have to work on our hearts. And as I said, we all must sit in the company of the people of Allah we should do the asgard that they recommend on a daily level and we should try our level best not to sin. And we should think about doing every single thing. The words that we speak. You know, subhanAllah, we sit together and we talk about others. We backbite about others. We talk, you know, we harm other people through our words. We make fun of other people. We lie. We cheat. We deceive. We don't cover ourselves properly. You know, we don't control our 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 eyes will look at all of that bad stuff on the TV and the internet. All of these things when we do, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will take out the love from other people's heart for us. And our the calamities fall, the worries come. It is all because of this one very thing that we are sinning. We are not being obedient to Allah Ta'ala, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So please, we need to be kept completely, absolutely submissive to Allah and His Messenger. We should become those people of Allah. We should develop that love of Allah Ta'ala in our hearts. And then Allah Ta'ala will put our love in other people's hearts as well, in the heart of our children, in the heart of our husbands. Inshallah Ta'ala, may Allah Ta'ala give all of us the tawfiq that we be able to become those people. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq that we be able to become those mothers as well that who are able to 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 train their children in the in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa akhru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inshallah before dua if we can all do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sins that we have done until now. All of us have been sinning, honestly. There is nobody who has who has not sinned. We sin with our tongue, with our eyes, with our heart, ill feelings, animosities, hatred, jealousy, arrogance, you name it. So inshallah, please, as I said, let's do tawbah from all the sins that we have done. There are some kalimat that our mashaykh have taught of tawbah. If we recite these kalimat, basically it's a renewal of our iman. If we recite that, 
with the intention that I'm doing tawbah from all the sins, inshallah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala will indeed forgive us of all of our sins. If anybody wants to take bayt in the silsila, they can make the intention of bayt. Others can, inshallah ta'ala, recite it in the intention of tawbah. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhi nasdafa amma ba'd. If you can all recite these kalimat, say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhiri wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allahi ta'ala wal ba'thi ba'd al maut amantu billahi kama huwa bi asma'ihi wa sifatihi wa qabiltu جميع أحكامه إقرار باللسان وتصديق بالقلب أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين these are the kalima. There are few mamulat that our mashaykh have taught. If you're already buried with the shaykh and you're doing your mamulat and you know continue doing that, but others, there are few mamulat that our mashaykh have taught. Number one is doing istighfar in the morning and in the evening hundred times each. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu ilay. So hundred times in the morning, hundred times in the evening. The second is salawat of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. That's also hundred times in the morning and hundred times in the evening. The third is the recitation of the Qur'an every day. Of course there are days where you cannot recite, but other than that, you know, recitation of Qur'an every day. Even if it's little, but recite every day. And the fourth thing which is the most important of all of these four ma'mulat is called muraqaba. Muraqaba means doing the zikr of Allah Ta'ala in the heart. The way to do that is that you, for some time, when you are, you are, nobody is bothering you, you sit in isolation, close your eyes and have this intention as if Allah Ta'ala's mercy is falling on the heart and as if the heart is being washed away of all the sins. And as if the heart is doing the zikr of Allah Ta'ala with His name, Allah, 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 and as if I'm listening. So you don't do anything. You don't say anything with the tongue, don't move, nothing. Relax, sit just with this intention as if Allah Ta'ala's mercy is coming on the heart and the heart is doing Allah, 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 and I'm listening. Quietly, relaxed, focus on the left hand side of your chest. 10, 15, 20 minutes of muraqaba every day, very, very powerful zikr. So four ma'ulat. Istighfar morning, evening, hundred times. Turud, hundred uh, morning, evening, hundred times each. Recitation of the Quran and Muraqaba. So these are four mamulat if you do every day. Very powerful adhkar. And at the very same time, please try to have istizar of Allah. Always have this feeling that Allah Ta'ala is looking. Allah Ta'ala is watching. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you wherever you are. Always have this feeling. Always. And do everything, please ever do everything sunnah way. Please memorize musnoon du'as. And also recite those du'as at their times as well. Please. If you do these things, inshallah, you will feel a change in your heart, inshallah ta'ala. Alright, so before du'a, if you can do muraqaba for a few moments, just close your eyes with this intention that Allah's mercy is falling on our heart. And as if the heart is doing the dhikr of Allah with this beautiful name, Allah, Allah, Allah. لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله إن شاء الله ميك دعاء سبحان ربي الأعلى الوحاب الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك 
إنا كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مسرف القلوب سرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقباها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها يا أرحم الراحمين يا أكرم الأكرمين يا كريم يا غفار يا رحيم يا ودود يا وهاب يا ستار يا هنان يا منان يا الله Please accept this gathering from all of us. Ya Allah, all of these people who have come, please accept their coming, Ya Allah. Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, this was the gathering of your zikr. Ya Allah, we were not worthy of sitting in this gathering. We were not worthy of saying what we said. Ya Allah, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, we beg you that you please ignore our shortcomings, the lack of sincerity, the lack of ikhlas, the lack of adab, Ya Allah. Please accept it. Ya Allah, you yourself have said that فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Then you remember me and I'll remember you. Ya Allah, we have done our part. We beg you, Ya Allah, that you also please remember us in every single thing that we do. Ya Allah, please, even if you become heedless people, Ya Allah, you don't forget us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we every single second, Ya Allah, we are. Ya Allah, we, we do everything because of you, Ya Allah. We breathe because of you, we talk because of you. We walk because of you, we see because of you, we hear because of you. All these blessings, Ya Allah, are from you, Ya Allah. Please, Ya Allah, don't forget us, Ya Arhamar Rahimin. Ya Allah, today we do tawbah from all the sins that we have been doing. Ya Allah, we beg you, please, 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 Ya Allah, accept our tawbah. Ya Allah, make our tawbah, tawbah to nasu. Ya Allah, please make us consistent in our tawbah. Ya Allah, so many times in our life we have done tawbah. When we break it so quickly, Ya Allah, please make us consistent in our tawbah. Please, Ya Allah, please give us the honor of your obedience and save us from the disgrace of your disobedience, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please save our iman. Ya Allah, please save iman of our children, Ya Allah. Please save iman of every single person who is going to come until the day of judgment from our generations. Ya Allah. We also beg you that you please accept all of us for the service of your deen. Ya Allah, we know we are not qabil to serve your deen, but we also know that it is not about qabiliyat, it's only about qabuliyat. Ya Allah, please accept us, accept our children, Ya Allah. Please accept our generations to come, Ya Allah, every single one of them. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Ya Allah, in this time of shara and fitna, Ya Rahim Rahim, it is so difficult to serve the deen. It is so difficult to even walk on the path of deen. Ya Allah, but you, if you protect, then nobody can harm. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please keep us and our generations and all of us in your protection, Ya Allah. Ya Rahim Rahim, Ya Akram Al Akram. All the people who ask for du'as, you know their needs more than we do, Ya Allah. Please fulfill their needs from your infinite prayers. With khair, with barakat, with afiyat, with wusat. Ya Allah, people who are sick spiritually or physically, please grant all of them perfect cure. People who are in calamities, please remove them from calamities from them. Ya Allah, that all the ummah is in calamities. Ya Allah, everybody is in calamities. Ya Allah, we know it is because of our own sins. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please, Ya Allah, forgive all of us and remove these calamities. Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, Ya Akram al People who have children, Ya Allah, please make them the coolness of the, of, the, of the eyes of their parents. Ya Allah, please accept the whole family for the service of your deen. Ya Allah, people who don't have children, Ya Allah, grant them pious children. Ya Allah, with afiyat, with khair, Ya Allah. Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, please allow us to live a life of iman and die a death of iman. Allow us to recite kalima as our last words, Ya Allah. Make our nafs, nafsul mutma'inna before that day, just out of your mercy, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please fill our graves with, Ya Allah, with light, with nur. Ya Allah, please make the questions of the grave easy for us. Please make it spacious, Ya Allah, make it from the gardens of paradise. Ya Allah, on the day of judgment, we beg you, please give our books in our right hands. Please make us from your muqarrabeen. Ya Allah, please give us the shade of your throne. Please give us the water from the blessed hands of your beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please grant all of us 
his intercession and let us all please enter into paradise without any questioning and give us a space in the blessed feet of your beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam and most of it all ya allah grant all of us your perfect vision ya allah ya allah we don't know how to ask ya allah we beg you that you ya allah grant us the best of the dunya and the best of the akhirat with khair barakat afiyat wasad ya allah allow us to use our dunya for our akhirat ya arhamar rahimin ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين